current applications of integrated wavefront diagnostics. Your moderator for this evening's recorded event, Dr. Larry Patterson from Crossville, Tennessee. Uh, Netta, I've got a question for you. So you've got a patient and you discover during the pre-surgical workup that they've got ocular surface disease, OSD, uh, dry eyes, whatever you want to call it. So you see this patient, they're wanting cataract surgery, they've got OSD, do you modify your workup? Do you maybe give them a lot of drops and, and try to repeat everything? Or do you go, you know, let's treat this and maybe have you come back and, and repeat these measurements on another day? What's your... You know, thought? it all depends. It all depends on the patient. It depends on the degree of in, uh, impact on the visual system of the patient. And the OPD can really help determine that degree of impact. It also depends on the patient's expectation. If the patient is asking or wanting premium lenses, such as a multifocal lens or extended depth of focus or a toric, for example, then obviously it's more important for you to optimize the ocular surface. If the patient is uh, going for more of a mono monofocal lens and they're not necessarily uh, that uh, dead set on 2015 vision <laughs> without correction, then it may be less of an issue. But it, you know, this system allows you to determine the impact of the ocular surface disease on the visual system and in turn gives you uh, points to talk about uh, with, it, with the patient. Um, the Myers help, the other uh, measurements that the system gives you, it, it's all talking points to, to help uh, gauge not just your decision on what you're going to offer the patient, but also be able to create a much more reasonable expectation for the patient. Toby? Well, you're seeing more and more of ocular surface disease. Maybe it's because we're not finally noticing it, but probably because we have ways to treat it. And so I know that if I have a bad surface, I'm going to have bad biometry. And with our practices and what the expectations of are the patients, we now have to start aiming for more and more perfection. So I do find that this really helps us out. It's showing you and your technicians very quickly when you look at the Myers, you can see that distortion. So if that's not good, there's no reason to continue to keep going forward. You've got to fix the problem first. The problem is, well, some surgeons will say, well, if it's bad now and you fix it, they're going to drift back. But you want to be able to hit the target with what you're doing, and then it's their choice if they want to maintain that vision or not. Well, another key point about ocular surface disease is that this is a chronic and progressive disease. We have to let our patients know that they have a pre-existing condition, that no, the cataract surgery or the surgeon didn't give it to them at the time of cataract surgery, that they have something that they have to address well after they are done with their post-cataract surgery drops. So this helps me have that dialogue with the patient so that they don't falsely blame the surgeon for a disease that they have prior to their cataract surgery. Right, so as a cataract surgeon, there was a publication, the FACO study earlier this year, which showed that most cataract patients coming in for cataract surgery are asymptomatic for dry eye, but at least 50 to 80% of them have objective signs. So using the OPD device actually will show those objective signs. I can have a discussion with the patient because remember, if you don't discuss that with the patient after cataract surgery, it's my problem. But if I discuss it with the patient beforehand, it's still their problem. So I've at least addressed it ahead of time as most patients will blame the cataract surgery on the dry post-op. So it's a great way to catch it early, optimize treatment, avoid that extra chair time post-operatively by using this technology. So if I can answer the second yeah was what do we do and do we delay and such. Uh, definitely to follow up with what Mitch was saying is that, again, it depends, but then if, you've, if you see it, the onus is on us to optimize it, no matter what type of lens you're implanting. If it's a more uh, advanced technology lens, then obviously you would want to delay the, the uh, surgery further and repeat the testing and make sure that you've optimized. And you, know, you start with anti-inflammatories and such and have the patient come back. Uh, so, Regardless, if you determine that the patient has ocular surface disease, no matter what type of lens there is, treatment should be offered. There's really, I mean, there's a few things, you know, I really need in my practice. And now, I mean, me, my surgical coordinators, none of us, you know, it, we don't ever want to do cataract surgery on anyone without this. And this is just one of the reasons to see, oh my gosh, I didn't really notice at the slit lamp how dry their ocular surface was. So, uh, I just want to jump in with one more point on this. 
to make the patients understand. Of course, we try to explain it to them, and they, they don't, and they nod, and they, you think they understand, but they really don't. But the nice thing about the OPD3, especially with the placebo disc rings, is it's black and white and easy to understand. If their circles are not crisp and sharp, there's something wrong. If they're warped and irregular, most people can understand that this is a diseased tear film. Therefore, you need treatment. We all agree, ocular surface disease can have just really significant impact on your wavefront, on your refraction, on your quality of vision. Uh, we know that can change very quickly from blink to blink and from minute to minute. And, and you know, as, as Mitch says, you know, half the people with dry eye symptoms, I mean, that, that have dry eyes don't even have symptoms, not even aware of it. So what methods do you use to diagnose ocular surface disease? I mean, and, and do you use those same diagnostic methods in patients who aren't there for surgery? Well, like I said, I use my OPD3 on just about every patient that comes through the door. And so it's actually a big error checker to begin with because, like we said, if the Myers are distorted, the techs see it right away and they say, oh, time out, you know, we don't want to go further and get in any other biometry. We need to get this corrected first. But it also picks up other things. We had a beautiful corneal map that showed up and we'd already gotten the biometry on the patient. They were going to get scheduled for surgery and it had a big, almost like a C, almost a full annulus right there at about three millimeters. That was a perfect Goldman. The <laughs> fact that that machine could pick that up was amazing right then and there. But then when I looked at what the measurements were going to be, I had the patient come back, found out that we were going to have been a whole diopter off on our targeting. It was very good to be able to pick that up. And I think that's what we're finding in our practices is that the OPD is really allowing us to avoid mistakes, but also be able to have that graphical view that you can explain it to the patient. If I have to buy one machine, I'm going to pick the OPD3 because it does so much so well.